Hello, and welcome back to Good Chicken Teaching Resources. Today, we're going to be talking about the book, The Marrow Thieves by Cherie Delvami. This dystopian book takes place in Canada and follows Frenchie, a Metis boy who is on the run with other Indigenous people from the Canadian authorities. So what is going on is because of global warming and some other stuff, there has been these natural disasters that have rocked the landscape, as well as people are no longer able to dream. And because they can't dream, they're going crazy. Well, the only people that can dream are indigenous people. So they're taking the indigenous people and harvesting their bone marrow to create medicine to help everyone else out. So Frenchie with these other um, indigenous people is on the run to stay out of the reach of the government and the recruiters or what they call them. It, this is a great book. It is not a, an easy book. It deals with some very heavy issues. It also um, really plays up the history of indigenous people after Europeans came to North America and revisits some of the past trauma of that. And the facilities that they take them to, they refer to as schools. And it kind of refers back to the residential schools that Europeans used earlier in our history to try to strip the culture from these people and make them conform. So it's very, it's very interesting. It's much grounded in the history of indigenous people's experiences and not just, you know, this made up dystopian future. Um, I'm going to read a little excerpt from this book. Um, they're out kind of out in the wilderness hiding and running. A low whistle with a fluttering end sounded outside. The alarm, I jumped up. Where are you going, Riri sounded frantic. She just started to hear story and now I was leaving. Gotta go, something is coming. I dashed out of the tent, stepping into my boots with the laces still undone. The rest of the group, with the exception of Slopper, was around the low fire. Midge acknowledged me with a look and then sought out Chai Boy with his eyes. He motioned with his head to the east of our sight. Keeping in a crouch and hurrying to the trees, we were out in the open. It was too late to run or hide. We have to fight. Chai Boy pulled his long blade out from the sheath where he had hung at his belt and back into the trees until the shadows covered him completely. I needed to help. I grabbed a long stick from the fire, its end glowing with orange heat scales, and waited. My hand shook so the stick clattered a bit against the rock perimeter of the fire. Wob had crept over to the crouch in front of M M Nineveh. She nodded at me, and I scanned the forest behind them. Sweat dripped down the bridge of my nose. I blinked, as if that would relieve its slow, maddening itch. Then I heard it. Footsteps in the bush, not heavy steps, light and cautious, just like a recruiter on the prow. I raised the stick behind me like a bat, pulled it up over like a sword. I could hear the sizzle of the lit tip by my ear. Closer. I swallowed hard and almost coughed, catching it at the last minute so that my eyes teared over. I heard Midge Al call to Chai Boy, who answered with deep silence closer. The steps were slow but steady. I picked up the swoosh of a drag like a bag or maybe a body. Maybe we weren't the first camp to be discovered. I could swear I saw the branches move in the trees just past the second row beyond our clearing. All right. Again, I really recommend this book. It's very good. There's a lot of suspenseful moments in it just like that one. Um, there is a link to where you can purchase this book in the description below. Or, of course, always check your local and school libraries. Thank you for watching. Um, please don't forget to subscribe. And for more from Good Check and Teaching Resources, you can follow us on Pinterest, Facebook, or you can check out our blog and our Teachers Pay Teachers page. Those links are below. Thank you.